talking about life, the wisdom is supposed to be the contribution and the, the, the only key to handle the mystery of our life. And that is the, what we suffer. No matter how much we enjoy life in one hand, we equally suffer tremendously on the other hand. Basically, as the Buddha said, it is a samsara and a samsaric life. So we do have this suffering uh, attached. Attached. Basically, four kinds of suffering. Getting old, death, sick, birth, rebirth. <coughs> Basically, this is attached to our life. Many people even say, if you are born, you are born to suffer. That's not true. You are born, you are born to, to make yourself free from suffering. Because this is the only life which has a chance to be able to free from suffering. No other life. Don't have to look far. Look within our understanding. Lives we see around. Can animal life make it free themselves from suffering once for all? They can't. No matter how big, how strong, how powerful they may be, tigers will not make themselves free from suffering. Elephants, nice and sweet and wonderful and big, but still they cannot make themselves free from suffering. Snakes, birds, sweet little rabbits, deer, I get them in my backyard and don't see them making themselves free from suffering. They are struggling to eat grass, get some water, food, drink, and that's it. Protection from other animals or the hunters. And that's, that's they know how to do it. When the deer family crossing the road, the mother or the father will stand in there and watch till these little ones crossed. If the car driver stops and they will watch, then the things the kids will go, and then themselves will go. But if car moves, the mother or father, I don't know, whatever they are, but they will jump on your car with all four legs, jump it on, and smash your window, or they themselves get hurt. And that's how they know how to protect nothing beyond. And we have this extraordinary mind, extraordinary physical body. Of course, it's full of a problem, full of suffering, but it's an extraordinary quality. The combination of this mind and the combination of this body 
and the time what we are in give us the opportunity. Honestly, that is the truth. Let's say if we are 100 years earlier in the United States, opportunity such as this, we will see crazy. Some crazy. Remember when the Baba Ram Das went to India and came back with his little uh, Indian, uh, whatever it is, kurta pajama. That's why the dress is kurta pajama. So the pajama with the little uh, khaki dress, and uh, everybody dressed up the same thing, and uh, claiming on that uh, hill of uh, his father's residence. Remember? Uh, so uh, everybody, except those, the hundreds of people who are claiming over there, but other than that, outside, every thought, the thought, it is absolutely crazy. <laughs> crazy. And then came this, uh, <coughs> Then came this uh, uh, Hari Ram, Hari Krishna group with the orange dress and a little uh, ching, ching, ching that goes, you know, whatever, <laughs> whatever that is. And um, the whole general society think these are another crazy bunch. Bunch. And uh, so gradually, over the years, the intellectuals have accepted. Actually, it is accepted by the intellectual uh, group of people. You know, really, the, the great thinkers uh, all uh, begin to think about it. And, and then, of course, the Hollywood picked it up, too. And uh, so now, it is not that strange, though still it is strange. Uh, our administration people think you can't publicize that, that because of Buddhism. So sometimes. Uh, so it really tells you uh, how uh, mind affected. Affected. Um, affected. So. And then I also notice people um, sort of what you call it, uh, uh, middle class people who are struggling um, also try to hide and try to try not to say about, you know, I'm practicing uh, this philosophy or I'm practicing these thoughts, people try to avoid because fear of a repercussion, fear of a rejection, and definitely uh, people do that. But still, it is a way much more better. And particularly, low middle class people, it is open because they don't have that fear. They don't have that and that hesitation. It is very free in that. But it is when you go up to upper middle class, you do still have those little bit. But then when you go very high uh, rich society, you don't have that at all. Because they are, they are completely open and free. It is the, the, the upper middle class people they struggle this. But I'm sure it will get through. But we all, this is what I meant is, we have a, such a great opportunity, which they don't. They do, some people don't, like a, the absolute yuppies, and may think this is absolutely strange, and uh, it is as no value uh, for whatsoever. So that is, that is one reason why they don't have an opportunity. Uh, another group of people, 
uh, who will also don't have opportunities because they just don't buy it. Just don't buy it. So, but for us, those of you, open mind, intelligent, understand it, try to understand the life. Try to see what is really wrong. That including scientists, hardcore scientists. Honestly, the other day, when His Holiness is in New York, there was a, a private lunch, um, a group of people who support the Dalai Lama been supporting for years. They invited me. And the middle of the night, I got a telephone call saying that, would you do the dedication speech tomorrow? So I was, uh, so I didn't decide yet till I went there. And when I went there, they said, would you? I said, yeah, I will. So I did. And in that dedication speech, uh, dedication prayer, I used the two different words. Usual one, paraphrasing, in the land of a cigarette. Um, uh, one who gives the all joy and happiness, then saying also the compassion that the Buddha, may you remain for Ever we said that, uh, sometimes in Tibet and Canada. And um, then for people, uh, we say as long as as long as the space remains, uh, we will all remain there to spare the misery of a people. So I have sort of two, and in the in that first long life for Dalai Lama, I said. You are the sources of joy and happiness because when your government lost in Tibet, the Buddhism in Tibet died. Yet you started in India. Uh, almost like the Judaism died in Europe during the World War II. It started rebreathing in the United States. Just like that. I didn't say that, but this, that was my thought. Just like that, you started the, the, the uh, Buddhism, Tibetan Buddhism in India. Not only the buildings and the number of people, but the quality of the people. I mean, the education aspects of it. And so much so that, so much so that it will help today throughout the world wherever this Tibetan Buddhism, mindfulness, and all of this, wherever it's going, it is to become the source of that, becoming, that's why you are the source of help, you are the source of joy. So that's how I put it in. And uh, that's all I would like to say, and thank you so much. Uh, for being here today. Thank you.